Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 21st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I want to talk about how unfortunately the North Atlantic appears to have the potential to fire off a number of additional storms on top of the already severe events that we have seen during the hurricane season of 2018. It's worth noting now that the National Hurricane Center is tracking four disturbances that have the potential to develop over the coming days. And these include an area of disturbed weather east of the Caribbean, a large and what appears to be well-organized tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa, which appears to have a high likelihood of development over the next four to five days. And two areas of disturbed weather off the U.S. East Coast, one a rather disorganized circulation near Bermuda, and some of the apparent remnants of Florence in entering the central North Atlantic. Just transitioning over to the National Hurricane Center disturbance map, we can see these four disturbances located. It's worth noting that many of these disturbances have a low chance of development within the next two days, but a number have a rather high chance of development within the next five. For example, the, the remnants associated with Florence has a 70% chance of developing into a tropical cyclone over the next five days. The disturbance just east of the Caribbean has seen a reduced chance of tropical cyclone formation down to about 10%. And the disturbance near Bermuda is showing just a 20% chance of development over the next five days. 99 Lima, which is the tropical wave that I was talking about emerging off of Africa, uh, does appear to be pretty strong for a tropical wave and shows a 60% chance of developing over the next week. So four areas of interest and of concern, especially considering the fact that human-caused climate change has turned the North Atlantic into a hurricane amplification machine, particularly close to the coast of the United States, with sea surface temperatures ranging between about two degrees Celsius above average in the Gulf and east of Florida to around 1.5 degrees Celsius above average, even in the zone that Florence recently plowed through, which can tend to cool off surface waters through the process of storm-induced upwelling to off the U.S. Northeast coast where temperatures are much, much warmer than normal in the range of three to as much as five degrees Celsius above average off the U.S. Northeast coast. What this means is that any tropical cyclone approaching the U.S. will tend to feed on warmer than normal waters, which will have a tendency to increase its intensity and in addition, atmospheric water vapor levels over the U.S. East remain quite high, which also provides fuels for storms and which is also a signature fingerprint of human-caused climate change because increasing temperatures increase atmospheric water vapor levels. Just want to also add that the overall path that hurricanes and tropical cyclones would tend to follow is for the most part warmer than normal, even as we get out into the tropical Atlantic, which near Africa in some locations has been a little bit cooler than normal, but the North Atlantic as a whole is considerably warmer than normal. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to the atmospheric water vapor map just to show you what we're looking at here for the US East Coast and the US Gulf Coast. And so what we, what we have tended to have is broad circulation patterns, drawing air in from the tropics and in from these warmer than normal surface waters and feeding them in over the eastern half of the United States, which has helped to feed extreme rainfall events, 
from the central U.S. on eastward throughout summer. This includes Florence, which shattered a number of all-time records for precipitation in a tropical cyclone in the regions where Florence impacted, in particular North Carolina and South Carolina. So if we do see another storm that threatens the U.S. East Coast, the dynamics do not appear to have changed. We still have a blocking high pressure system tending to form over a region of ocean just east of the northeast coast. And in contrast to what would typically have been a Bermuda high, this northward high will tend to steer storms more into the U.S. east coast. And this is also an aspect of human-caused climate change, a, a, a northward shift in high pressure development, which, which would tend to circulate storms more toward the U.S. East Coast. So, so a number of climate change related factors that have the potential to worsen storms and to increase the likelihood for a U.S. landfall at present in visible display in the various climate monitors that we have. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.